Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. This is the fourth video in a series on the heat mat. In this one I'm going to add a second temperature sensor. That way I can show the temperature in the room versus the temperature of the mat. As in the other videos, I'm going to pick up from where I left off. I'm going to start in the next section, and then I'm going to show you the schematic of how I added the device, and then I'll go to the Arduino, and then we'll do a test. I'm going to try to keep this on this smaller display. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink the size of that LED or the little image that will show whether the heater's on or off. And the way you can adjust the size of it is you select it, and then you go to browse. And then that brings up the two images. And then you just double click on it. And then that brings up another area where you can edit it and then you click edit. Then you can do things with it. You can shrink it just manually like this or it looks like it stays in scale. But it doesn't if you go up here and you don't click this right here. So now it's not proportional. So now you can stretch it and do different things with the image. In our case, though, we're going to keep it proportional. I'm going to make it 50 by 50. And then I'm just going to click Save. And you can see that it's shrunk. I'm going to do the same thing with the red light. Change it to 50. doesn't matter which one. And then I'll hit save. And then they're both shrunk. Now you can see it's going to take up a lot less room on the display. I'm going to move this page down low. I'm going to move this over to the right. And then I'm going to put these right next to each other. So this way I'll have the mat temperature down here. And then I'll have the room temperature up here. I'm going to put my real-time clock readout up on top. I'm going to have another button down here to go to the uh, clock page or a time page, however I want to call it. I'm going to change the description of this to temp and then I'll have time. We're not going to change anything functionally, we're just changing the labels. And then I've got this one labeled mat or this X0 labeled mat and this X1 labeled room. I set these both to global and I set the VVS to two digits. Now I'm going to pull up the Fretzig and go over the, the schematic. The drawing for this is really simple. You just copy what you have on the other one. You can add another sensor just by plugging the, the what I have as the white line or the data line into the same pin on the Arduino and then you just add the voltage and ground. And it works just fine, at least so far in testing it's been fine. The only thing is, is you'll see that I identify the sensors by 0 and 1. And I'm not 100% sure how it detects 0 and 1. I did read up, and each device has a unique address, and you can go into it and get it by that. But for this series, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So now we'll move over to the Arduino. Now, just like in the Nexion, the Arduino I'm picking up right from where I left off before. And there's really not too much to add. You don't have to add anything to this top area where we define the, the one wire and the Dallas temperature um, libraries themselves. When you set up the temp sensor, you're actually setting up the pin. So you're setting up all of the sensors that are on that pin. So all we have to do is add one line. So I'm calling it temp F2 for temp Fahrenheit. And I'm not going to change the one or add one to the one above because then I have to change the code down below. So I just have float temp F and float temp F2. And you can see over there when the temp sensor dot get temp F by index is a one. And then where we go to display it here, where we show the values and we update those values on N0 on the other page, we'll just add it in here. So now on page 0, x0, we're going to have the mat temperature. And on page 0, x1, we're going to have the room temperature. And the only thing we change is that x0 and x1. And then we do the f and the f2. Because we have the float on the next set to move the two digits on the right and make that the decimal point. So we multiply them by 100. I'm going to upload this and show you that it works. 
So here it is. I, I haven't uploaded it yet to the Arduino. I wanted to show you that it's working like it was because all we did was move some things around and we can see that the temperature is 62.8. So now I'll upload it and we'll see that it changes. And you can see that it's now showing both temperatures. And the sensors are sitting right next to each other, so that makes sense. I'm going to warm one of them up. I can't remember where I have the temperature set at. Oh, it's set at 255. So we're going to have to make that adjustment. You know, I have a little bit of an issue here. What's happening is, as I'm trying to lower the temperature, it's updating quickly. I'm going to go back to the next, or back to the Arduino. We update these temperatures, or those N0 and N1 values here, and when we originally set this up, we had it set for every five seconds. So now what's happening is, as I push the button, it, it overwrites those values. It takes it because I take send the value from the next gen to the Arduino, but it also is sending this value up. So I think I'm going to make a change right now just to set those values in the, in the double EEPROM. And so what I've done is I've set the EEPROM values and then, so I'm going to write to them and then I'll read from them and update the next gen. I must have changed my Arduino or something in between these videos. So I'm going to upload this, we'll get it all set, and then I'll have to come back and delete these lines. So now I have my values set, so now I'm going to go back and delete those lines. Or actually, I might just comment them out. And then this way, if I need them later on, I can just undelete them, overwrite it again, and go on. So now we have it set at 75. And you can see that it's set up to 88. I was just warming it up this whole time, so it's gotten a little bit high. So, But hopefully when we get down to a lower value, it will shut off. I'm going to adjust that now up to like 70-something. But you'll see that it's going to be harder to do this. Because you can see that it kind of wants to go back because it's every... It's every second now that it tries to update, so it's going to get hard. So I'm probably going to have to do something and adjust that. Like maybe set up a separate asynchronous delay so that I'm only updating this every five seconds, whereas I'm updating the temperature every second. Because it is nice to get that update a little more regularly. You can see that it's working. My other question is, was there a problem? Does the EEPROM not work the way I thought? So I'm going to reset the Arduino and see if it goes back to those values. And yes, I reset it and it's still at 75 and 73. So now we have it at 75 and 69. I'm going to go ahead and hit the button again. and appears to be holding just fine. Let's warm it up and make sure that the heater kicks off. Yeah, and it appears that everything is still working fine. I don't know what happened with that EEPROM setting. And it was kind of nice though, because now I figured out something else I need to, I need to add to the script. Just to quickly review, all we did on this video on the next gen was added some fields so that we can get two different temperatures and then we made room for future for the time and time button down here and the display and then we'll have to add a third page so we can set different things on the timer but we'll get to that into the next video and then in the Arduino we didn't do a whole lot there other than figure out that this EEPROM kinda got messed up somewhere along the line 
But down here, we just added a line to read another temperature sensor. And then down below here, we just wrote to that other x1 value, the new value that we're reading. In the next video, I'm going to introduce the real-time clock and figure out some way to address that timing issue when we want to set the values on the next one. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.